Well, uh, good morning and a very warm welcome to you uh, this morning. Um, this, I think there's notices for this week. Uh, the midweek worship is in Rawcliffe on Tuesday and there's a benefit service, one of um, four benefit services in July and August. Uh, this is actually because it's the fifth Sunday of the month, um, the other ones, but I happen to be away as well. Uh, and uh, so there's a benefit service at St. James on um, this Sunday and next Sunday at 10 o'clock and the week after it's uh, the tea and cakes I don't know what is that what it's called tea and cake at uh, two o'clock uh, at number one. is it well, on my paper one beach avenue there you are you see if only I could read uh, one Beach Avenue on the corner there, um, and uh, the service will be after at the normal time at six o'clock on uh, the seventh. Uh, so I think that's all the notices for the moment, unless anyone has. Thunder and lightning, <laughs> or something. Anyhow, right, okay, so. So I don't think that was divine intervention, but we'll find out. Right, okay. Uh, so we'll, let's stand for our opening uh, greeting. And uh, you can follow in the orders of service or on the screen. It's on page four in the order of service. Welcome in the name of Christ, God's grace, Mercy and peace be with you. As we stand in humble expectation, we pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first hymn is number 33 from the Mission Praise Books. I'm hoping that the words on the screen are right. I've had to put them in at the last minute because of a communication uh, breakdown. And um, so uh, hopefully they're right. Uh, otherwise, they are in the hymn book number 33. We stand to sing.
We sit or kneel for our prayers of penitence. <coughs> our Lord Jesus Christ said the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Jesus is our high priest, tempted like us, yet without sin. He lives forever in heaven to intercede for us. Through him we approach the throne of grace with confidence and confess our sins. We have willfully misused your gifts of creation. Lord, be merciful. Forgive yes. us our sin. We have seen the ill treatment of others and have not gone to their aid. Lord, be merciful. Forgive yes. us our sin. We have condoned evil and dishonesty and failed to strive for justice. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. We have heard the good news of Christ, but have failed to share it with others. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. We have not loved you with all our heart, nor our neighbors as ourselves. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. We stand for the glory. Together we declare glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Creator God, you made us all in your image. May we discern you in all that we see and serve you in all that we do, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We sit for readings from the Bible. The Old Testament reading is taken from Genesis. So the Lord told Abraham, I've heard a great outcry from Sodom and Gomorrah because their sin is so flagrant. I'm going down to see if their actions are as wicked as I have heard. If not, I want to know. The other men turned and headed towards Sodom, but the Lord remained with Abraham. Abraham approached him and said, will you sweep away both the righteous and the wicked Suppose you find 50 righteous people living there in the city. Will you sweep it away and not spare it for their sakes? Surely you wouldn't do such a thing, destroying the righteous as lo along with the wicked. Why, you would be treating the righteous and the wicked exactly the same. Surely you wouldn't do that. Should not the judge of all the earth do what is right? And the Lord replied, 
If I find 50 righteous people in Sodom, I will spare the entire city for their sake. Then Abraham spoke again. Since I have begun, let me speak further to my Lord, even though I am but dust and ashes. Suppose there are only 45 righteous people rather than 50. Will you destroy the whole city for lack of five? And the Lord said, I will not destroy it if I find 45 righteous people there. Then Abraham pressed his request further. Suppose there are only 40. And the Lord replied, I will not destroy it for the sake of the 40. Please don't be angry, my Lord, Abraham pleaded. Let me speak. Suppose only 30 righteous people are found. And the Lord replied, I will not destroy it if I find 30. Then Abraham said, Since I have dared to speak to the Lord, let me continue. Suppose there are only 20. And the Lord replied, then I will not destroy it for the sake of the twenty. Finally, Abraham said, Lord, please don't be angry with me if I speak one more time. Suppose only ten are found there. And the Lord replied, Then I will not destroy it for the sake of the ten. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is taken from St. Paul's letter to the Colossians. As you therefore have received Jesus, Christ Jesus the Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. See to it that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the universe, and not according to Christ. For in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily, and you have come to fullness in him, who is the head of every ruler and authority. In him also you were circumcised with a spiritual circumcision by putting off the body of the flesh in the circumcision of Christ. When you were buried with him in baptism, you were also raised with him through faith in the power of God, who raised him from the dead. And when you were dead in trespasses, and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive together with him when he forgave us all our trespasses, erasing the record that stood against us with its legal demands. He set aside, nailing it to the cross. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and made a public example of them, triumphing over them in it. Therefore, do not let anyone condemn you in matters of food and drink or observing festivals, new moons and Sabbaths. These are only a shadow of what is to come, but the substance belongs to Christ. Do not let anyone disqualify you, insisting on self-abasement and worship of angels, dwelling on visions, puffed up without cause by a human way of thinking and not holding fast to the head from whom the whole body, nourished and held together by its ligaments and sinews, grows with a growth that is from God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to I didn't manage to get time to put all the words of this uh, hymn into the presentation on the screen, so it's only in the hymn book. It's, it's number 302, I Want to Walk with Jesus Christ. Number 302.
standing for the reading from the gospel. The reading is from Luke chapter 11, beginning to read from verse 1. Hear the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ, as recorded by Luke. Once Jesus was in a certain place praying. As he finished, one of his disciples came to him and said, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. Jesus said, this is how you should pray. Father, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. Give us each day the food we need. And forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And don't let us yield to temptation. Then, teaching them more about prayer, he used this story. Suppose you went to a friend's house at midnight, wanting to borrow three loaves of bread. You say to him, a friend of mine has just arrived for a visit, and I have nothing for him to eat. And suppose he calls out from his bedroom, Don't bother me, the door is locked for the night, and my family and I are all in bed, I can't help you. But I tell you this, though he won't do it for friendship's sake, if you keep lock knocking long enough, he'll get up and give you whatever you need because of your shameless persistence. And so I tell you, keep on asking, and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking, and you will find. Keep on knocking, and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks, receives. Everyone who seeks, finds. And to everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. You fathers, if your children ask for a fish, do you give them a snake instead? Or if they ask for an egg, do you give them a scorpion? Of course not. So if you sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? This is the Gospel of the Lord. As we stand, let us pray. Dear Lord, as we think about your teaching and the teaching of Scripture, may it help us to live our lives in the ways of goodness and godliness. In Jesus' name, amen. Please do sit down. This is one of those stories that it's relative or passages so it's relatively easy to understand what's being said but there is uh, quite a lot of confusion about the how this works out because particularly the second part of the passage talks about uh, realities of prayer that most of us uh, do not experience very much if at all and uh, certainly it's an experience of many, many people, that they pray and they keep on asking and they keep on seeking and they keep on praying and they keep on asking and they keep on seeking and yet they do not get what they want. And Jesus seems to imply the opposite is going to be the case, that you will get what you want if you just are persistent about it and bother God enough. And uh, we have to try and work out why it is that there is this problem, this difference between the reality that we experience and the reality of what is said here in front of us. As ever, I try to find a way of interpreting uh, particular scripture in the light of all of scripture and trying to see it in... Um, in that way, uh, of course, if you know the um, 39 articles of the Church of England, which I'm sure each one of you does off by heart, one of them is that you must never refute scripture from scripture. And I don't think that we should try and 
uh, make a piece of scripture not true, not speak to it in itself uh, by referring to other bits of scripture, but by looking more widely, we are able to help understand that piece of scripture and allow it to speak to us. And so, if we look at the experience of Jesus, who is teaching these people, his followers, his disciples, to pray? He, in the Garden of Gethsemane, prays fervently that the cup might be taken away from him. He prays the point where blood is pouring from him because of the pain and anguish he is facing. And yet, that cup is not taken from him. And he, in that context, puts into context some of what we hear in the other version of the Lord's Prayer, which is in Matthew, uh, which is probably a longer version of the same bit of teaching. Uh, Your kingdom come, your will be done. Here, we don't have the your will be done bit written into uh, what Luke writes for us. And so we don't tend to contextualize that when we are asking, we are asking for his kingdom to come and his will to be done. And that we are not asking simply to get what we want. And it's very easy for people to take a bit of scripture and say, right, this is going to do what I want from it. But actually, always, and throughout scripture and throughout Jesus' life, it is about a wider picture and the picture of the growing of the kingdom of God, the battle between good and evil, which God has engaged in to overcome evil with good through the work of the Holy Spirit, who we hear about at the end of this passage, who the Heavenly Father will give to anybody who asks and uh, will give it in a good way. The later part of the passage maybe also helps us begin to understand why sometimes God may not give us what we want uh, because Jesus uses the illustration of a parent giving something to their child uh, or the child asking of the parent something and the parents giving them good things. But clearly uh, parents don't give their children the bad or dangerous things. Well, not too much, you know, obviously. Some of us do risk them by putting them in racing cars and other such things. But, you know, generally, we try and make sure that our children are receiving what's good and protected from what is bad. And God, when we go to him, similarly is protecting and helping us. But that doesn't account for those occasions where What we're looking for is good. What we're looking for is the kingdom of God to come in. What we're looking for is goodness, not just for ourselves. And yet it doesn't happen. And uh, we can only see that that is the case uh, in the way that the church has been and grown down the centuries, that so often things take a lot of time to change and become the right way and that often uh, people have discovered it is through the battles that we get to know and our spirituality grows in depth and our ability to trust God for what is really important rather than what's on the surface comes through. Uh, But that is not to belittle the reality that sometimes that's difficult, sometimes it's extremely painful, and sometimes it's not easy at all, and there are many who find that they uh, are turned away from God because they have asked for things and not seen those things come into being. To all of them, the story of Jesus speaks to us and to them because Jesus dies an early death. He lives a in a difficult period, in a difficult place, and comes and makes us know that God works with us in the pain and difficulties of life to help us to be prepared for the heavenlies. And that uh, no matter what happens here, there are things, there are things which can become secure in our spirit, in our inner being, in the way that we are changing and developing which cannot be taken away by anything that uh, 
the cruelty of the physical life and the challenges of the emotional life can put upon us. Those things are true and strong. And those are the things which Jesus engages with in his short and difficult life and often painful life. And he uh, and the followers of him engage with in a way that brings them joy, in a way that makes them realize that they have overcome the great enemies around them. And certainly for them, those enemies were probably a lot more real than us. The enemies of, of death, of illness, of uh, atrocious treatment by people nearby. We don't uh, generally stand the, the risk of being beaten and killed willy-nilly as people of that period did. And so we can see in the greater picture of scripture that there is a reality that God gives good things to us and helps us to become more and more full of depth of satisfaction and purpose as we pray. And so we, like Jesus, need to be people of prayer. The beginning of the passage tells us once when Jesus was in a certain place praying, and we see this happening again and again in his life, he went to pray because he knew that only with God's help, only by reflecting with God, was he able to live effectively and well. Only as forgiveness of sins became real for him and for those around about him was he able to transform the nature of a world which was full of vengeance. Only as he recognized that all things come from God and we need to ask him daily for our food were we able to actually put ourselves in the right place in the right context that enables us to face the outrageous fortune of life, be it good or bad, with either thankfulness or with strength and the ability to go forward. So we do need to pray and we need to follow Jesus' pattern, but we also need to be aware that sometimes what we think we want to happen won't happen. And we need to be able to trust for that just as Jesus did. Amen. Though we're going to stand to declare our faith using the full words of the Nicene Creed. We say these together. Let's declare our faith in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We believe in one God the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. We sit or kneel for our prayers of intercession. The prayers today are on page 10 with, addi with additions. Gracious God, fountain of all wisdom, 
We pray for all Christian people, for our bishops, for all Christian leaders, and for those who teach and guard the faith. May the word of Christ dwell richly in our hearts and us together in the bond of your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear my We pray for the leaders of the nations and for those in authority under them. Give them the gift of your wisdom and the right discernment in all things. No one, from President Biden down to the man on the street, can miss seeing the effects of climate change at the moment. Fires in California, Greece, Portugal, Spain, landslides in China caused by melting glaciers, and famine in large parts of Africa and the rest. We pray that the leaders of the nations will stop prevaricating and do all that they can to halt these changes, at least. We pray for those who suffer in these disasters. We pray that they get the help that they need. But let us all see and hear and know just what is happening. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our village and for all this community, for those who live and work here, and for those who visit this place. We pray that more people in the village will, feel, will realize their need of you. May they come to church out of idle curiosity, anything, just come and hear your word and have the opportunity to open their hearts to you. Speak your word of peace in our midst and help us to serve one another as Christ has served us. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those who do not believe and yet who long to know you, the very word of life. Open their ears to hear your voice and open their hearts to the knowledge of your love in Christ. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for those bowed down with grief, fear, or sickness. And especially this week, we pray for those who have struggled with the heat. Some people can cope with it, some people just cannot, and we pray for them. May your living word bring comfort and healing to all those in need. Lord, in your mercy, It would be tempting, if you listen to the news, to feel despair. It would be easy to feel that too much is going wrong. But we need to pray. We need to be with God. And then we will not despair. We will cope with anything with his company. We need to and we must pray. No prayer is wasted, but I'm sure God prefers the prayers that come truly from the heart. So let us learn to pray more and feel less despair and hope in him. Nothing compares to the promise he, we have in him. Lord, in your mercy, we give thanks for all those who have died in the faith of Christ. And we would rejoice with all your saints, trusting in the promise of your words fulfilled. Lord of life, hear our prayer and make us one in heart and mind to serve you with joy forever. Amen. Publish the band's marriage between David Ian Walker of the parish of Rawcliffe and Patricia Louise Markham Watson, also of the same parish, this being for the second time of asking. If any of you know cause or just impediment why these persons should not be joined together in holy matrimony, ye are to declare it. We pray for David and Tricia. Dear Lord, we ask that as 
they move towards their marriage, that you will help them to continue to grow in the love that they have. That they may find your strength with all the organization that they need. That their celebration may be a time of great joy and of great support to all who come. In Jesus' name, amen. We stand to share Christ's peace together. Let the peace of Christ rule in your heart, since as members of one body we are called to peace. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's offer one another a sign of that peace. <coughs> After him is number 1072, in Christ alone, we remain standing to sing. Lord is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. We sit or kneel for the thanksgiving prayer. We use prayer F. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
You are worthy of our thanks and praise, Lord God of truth. For by the breath of your mouth, you have spoken your word and all things have come into being. You fashioned us in your image and placed us in the garden of your delight. Though we chose the path of rebellion, you would not abandon your own. Again and again, you drew us into your covenant of grace. You gave your people the law and taught us by your prophets to look for your reign of justice, mercy and peace. As we watch for the signs of your kingdom on earth, we echo the song of the angels in heaven, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Lord God, you are the most holy one, enthroned in splendor and light. Yet in the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ, you reveal the power of your love, made perfect in our human weakness. Amen. Lord, we believe. Embracing our humanity, Jesus showed us the way of salvation, loving us to the end. He gave himself to death for us, dying for his own. He set us free from the bonds of sin that we might rise and reign with him in glory. Amen. Lord, we believe. On the night he gave up himself for us all, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Amen. Lord, we believe. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. Lord, we believe. Therefore, we proclaim the death that he suffered on the cross. We celebrate his resurrection, his bursting from the tomb. We rejoice that he reigns at your right hand on high, and we long for his coming in glory. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. As we recall the one perfect sacrifice of our redemption, Father, by your Holy Spirit, let these gifts of your creation be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Form us into the likeness of Christ and make us a perfect offering in your sight. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Look with favour on your people and in your mercy hear the cry of our hearts. Bless the earth, heal the sick, let the oppressed go free. And fill your church with power from on high. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Gather your people from the ends of the earth to feast with all your saints at the table in your kingdom where the new creation is brought to perfection in Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, 
have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Draw near with faith to receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Humbly we pray. Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands are unclean, our hearts are unprepared. We are not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation, and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him, and that we, with the whole company of Christ, may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen. to keep you in eternal life. God of our pilgrimage, you have led us to the living Refresh and sustain us as we go forward on our journey. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. To our Lord and King we pray. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. The love of the Lord Jesus draw you to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service. The joy of the Lord Jesus fill your hearts and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. 
Our final hymn today is number 501, O Jesus, I Have Promised. We stand to sing. Jesus, Lord of time, hold us in your eternity. Jesus, image of God, travel with us the life of faith. Jesus, friend of sinners, heal the brokenness of our world. Jesus, Lord of tomorrow, draw us into your future. Amen. In his strength we go.